My name is Jim Abernathy. I'm a wildlife conservationist specializing in sharks. I've been running shark ecotourism trips uh, for four decades. For the first 20 years, by flying planes to remote islands in the Caribbean um, and diving on day boats. And in 1997, I purchased the live aboard vessel Shearwater, the one we're on right now. Um, I grew up swimming with tigers, great hammerheads, oceanic white tips, bulls, lemons, and all kinds of these other predators that most of the world believes to be mindless man-eating monsters. But growing up with them firsthand, I can tell you that that is so far away from the truth. In the history of our planet, no other animal has ever been wiped out in such significant numbers as sharks have by people in the whole history of our planet. So they definitely need help. 50, 60 years ago, Cousteau's scientists traveled around the planet by boat, three revolutions. And when they got off the boat, they made a bunch of statements. One of those statements was that the uh, most prolific, the most abundant animal on the planet, over 100 pounds in weight, was clearly the oceanic white tip shark, the one that has suffered the most uh, devastating numbers. Today, there isn't an ocean that boasts 1% of that population. So, in the 80s, I had heard about this devastating industry, the shark fin industry. In the 90s, I was hearing more about it and I started seeing pictures of massive numbers of sharks being killed. And in the late 90s, I decided that I was kind of wasting my time. So I put together a plan in order to combat uh, the shark finning industry. And because it's so devastating to an animal that I truly love, I thought I'm gonna make a list of everything that I think I can possibly do to help sharks and then I'm gonna do them all. I, I will become uh, a National Geographic photographer, cinematographer and make films. I will write and publish the world's best shark conservation books. I will take groups of people out to experience sharks firsthand so that I can change their perception I had no idea that purchasing a liveaboard vessel would uh, change everything that I'm doing substantially. You see, um, I thought that I was just going to immerse myself into their world and, and that I would be able to see things that other people that just come out here and do a single dive or two uh, would never get. And while that is true, um, I had no idea that in 2002, I would very fortunately discover the affectionate side of sharks while trying to remove a hook. Just so you understand where that comes from, you know, imagine that you are passionately driven to love dogs. In my case, it's sharks. But, and then one day your dog comes home and it's got a hook all the way through its jaw. Oh, this is devastating. And of course, you're going to do everything within your power to try to remove that hook, and so did I. And I got this crazy idea way back then that if I was able to somehow make friends with the shark, gain a sense of trust, that maybe while I'm, I'm rubbing his head like a dog, I might be able to get the hook completely out. And that's what I tried. And indeed, two hours later, I had removed that hook. At that point, I looked around at the sharks in the area there was, you know, 50, 60 um, uh, Caribbean reef sharks, maybe 70 or 80 lemon sharks, tiger sharks, great hammerheads, bull sharks had hooks. And I thought, that's my new mission. I'm going to remove hooks from sharks using affection. We definitely need to save sharks. There is nothing more powerful than to experience a relationship with a wild animal. Yet I am training people every single day how to make friends with sharks, which is so ironic because the shark is the most feared animal on the planet.
people knew what I knew about them, they wouldn't be afraid at all. In fact, it's quite enjoyable to spend lots of time with these beautiful, magnificent creatures. To put it another way, you can't run on the safari with the lions. You can't run in the ice caps with the polar bears. But you can dive every single day with the world's largest predatory sharks. And the truth is, the reason you can do that is because sharks don't look at people as a food source. The proof is in the statistics. Man goes in the water 80 billion times a year. Yet from that, we have an average of about 75 bites worldwide. And from that, an average of six or less people are actually die from that bite. And the reason for that is quite simply because sharks don't eat people. I mean, no predator risks their life trying to attack an animal and then doesn't eat it, unless of course it's a mistake. And that's really what a shark attack is. It's a shark mistake. I believe that my passion driven to help sharks has paid it forward. And the reason I say that is because if you were to make a list of the top five or the top 10 uh, shark diving sites in the world, I've discovered three of them. And that's pretty amazing for just one guy out of seven and a half billion people on the planet. Um, of course, the number one dive site worldwide is, for sharks is Tiger Beach. I discovered that in December of 2001, uh, by accident actually, and, and, uh, but ever since I've been there and saw all these huge tiger sharks, I've been going there as my main shark diving location. Um, and that's just been a game changer for me, to be able to move and become part of the ecosystem, to become part of the animals that are swimming there on a daily basis, 25 days a month since 2001, has really altered everything at Tiger Beach. Now I go down there and I look at all my friends, as opposed to in the early days where it was just a bunch of sharks. Now I look and see how some of my friends are healing from the wounds that they've incurred from other sharks, whether it be mating behaviors or, or fishing accidents. Um, and the simple fact that I can watch all these sharks that I've removed their hooks from heal is so great. I have about 15 years knowing Jim, well, traveling with Jim, about 25 years knowing him. I have made a lot of travel with sharks these last years with many people. It's impressive the way he managed the sharks. He's a very good friend of all the sharks and he makes all the people love sharks. A lot of people like sharks and have done very good stuff because of him, because he made us to love these animals. He knows very well how to manage big sharks, uh, like tigers, giant hammerheads, bull sharks, lemons, gray reefs, many big sharks. Basically, 72% of all animals, aquatic and land, terrestrial, are all already killed in the last 60 years. What I have seen in my lifetime, you all will not be able to see because they're already gone. I have seen entire populations of sharks removed. Scalloped hammerheads used to be every 15 feet in the winter months in, in Palm Beach County, Florida. Sand tigers used to be on all the shipwrecks, sometimes as many as 50 to 80 sand tiger sharks. They're all gone now. 
So our planet has changed dramatically. And I think it's because of my very early baseline that I'm so much of a, a passionate conservationist trying to alter the course of our planet into a sustainable direction. I believe that with my images, my stories, and direct uh, contact one-on-one -on -one with these animals in the water, that I can alter more people into caring about these beautiful creatures that so desperately need our help. Sharks worldwide, 75 people are bitten and an average of six or less uh, um, die from that bite. 1,600 people are attacked and bitten every single year in the state of New York by people. Clearly, we're a much more dangerous animal. And if you look at what humanity does to all animals, um, we are clearly the worst animal on the planet. I've been working with Jim for a little over a year now. Growing up in Florida, I've always known of Jim. I've heard about Jim and the, the work that he does with sharks uh, and conservation. It's always been very inspiring to me. Uh, I've traveled a lot of the world working in different places, knowing that at some point I wanted to come work with Jim, but I wanted to gain more experience in other places before I came here because I know how closely he works with the sharks. So I wanted to kind of gain a little bit of confidence myself and just expertise and skills. So I've traveled and worked a lot of different places around the world. Coming and working with Jim is actually the fifth place that I've seen and worked with tiger sharks. And the way that he works with them is just so different from any other place I've ever been. About five years ago, I saw him. I was just with my camera, and I saw the big tiger shark, Emma, which is very big, about 16 feet long. Just came in front of him, opened a big mouth like this size, and he just went with his hand in the mouth, and it was all in seconds. I was scared what I was looking. I didn't have time to think what was happening. He put his hand in the mouth. He took a hook, take it out, and then Emma was saying thank you to him. Emma was, was happy with him, was happy with him like a little dog. And some minutes after that, Emma started eating. So Emma went to him and he knew perfectly well what was Emma telling him. Emma wanted him to take a hook out from his mouth. It was impressive. 
He's a guy that loves the sharks. He, he makes friends with the sharks. He teaches us and many of our groups and many people all over the world how to save the sharks. And he usually goes to many, many countries in the world to talk about sharks. And that's the way he makes people to love the sharks and for countries that not fish anymore the sharks, like the Bahamas. We're in the Bahamas and Bahamas is no shark fishing and the sharks are there and are protected. That's why there are so much sharks here. And that's a good income for the country. That's what many countries should look for. That's what Jim is teaching all of us about. They uh, have a certain sense of trust. Like uh, just yesterday, there was one that was a, a tiger shark, uh, Elsa Potter, that was just hovering right in front of me at one point. And I'm not exactly sure what, what she was doing, just, you know, swimming in the current very slowly with her head right here. So I grabbed to my head, uh, you know, to just try to let her know that I love her and that, that all is well. <laughs> There's just, there's places where you go and they will do somewhat similar where they'll feed tigers, but it's it's purely a, a feeding event that you're down there, there's a, a person standing at a bait crate, the tiger sharks come in and they feed the shark and it's, you know, at most a redirection kind of for touching. But with Jim is it's all about, you can see how much he cares and how much he has become friends with the sharks that it's, it's about the affection. Like they come in and it's not about feeding. It's they come in just to, to get loved by Jim. You'll see them go past the, the crate where all the fish and the, the bait is just so that they can go up to Jim and, and see him get their head rubbed by him. It's such a different experience from everything else you see whenever you've, you travel to, to go see tiger sharks anywhere else. And it's something that I'm really proud and happy to be able to work here with Jim because it's just an absolutely magical experience when you're down there watching him work. The behavior that I've been able to receive um, once I gain a sense of trust with these sharks is very hard for most people to believe. Um, you know, I, I see that they are genuinely seeking affection from me consistently. They swim up to me and stop, stop swimming and stand on their pectoral fins just begging to have their, their head rubbed. Um, and it's, it's an amazing thing to experience. I don't really think there's adequate words to describe the emotional roller coaster of feelings when a wild animal seeks you out for affection. <laughs> we're going to head down to Bimini where we will have lots of nurse sharks and we'll get to experience the love that we can give them and they thrive on it as well. In addition, we're going to see the great hammerhead of the 10 species of hammerheads in the world today. The great hammerhead is clearly in a league of its own. It's the only one that grows over four meters, and its world record is seven meters.
This expedition had the purpose of being the closest as possible to the sharks as we could get. Yesterday we arrived to Bimini, one of the few places in the world where you can see the great giant hammerhead. Imagine this shark of the length of a great white shark. Just the dorsal fin is almost two meters tall. Um, so this is a really big, beautiful shark and we're uh, very, very intelligent, highly evolved. Having the opportunity of diving here in Tiger Beach and Bimini with Jim, Hex and Luis has been an amazing experience. Seeing them in the water playing with the sharks and learning from them is indescriptable. Having the chance to come to Bimini and to Tiger Beach and Seeing with my own eyes how he treats these giant and beautiful animals with affection and this way he removes hooks has been like nothing I've ever seen before. There's been absolutely no records of any great hammerheads ever uh, causing any human being harm despite the fact that they are big which really doesn't make sense because they're listed as one of the five most dangerous sharks in the world. I've been diving for the last seven, eight years and nothing has been like the experience I've had till I met Jim. The passion I feel being underwater is one of my life's purpose. When I see sharks to their eyes, I feel the intelligence of them. You can see their beautiful and misunderstood beauty. Diving with these sharks raised my passion of knowing them and protect them. They make you see how beautiful life can be. It's a real experience seeing Jim in action. It's, it's amazing. And I think many people should follow what Jim's doing so we could have a better planet and the animals get taken better care of.
When I'm underwater uh, with these sharks, what goes through my mind? Wow, that's such a difficult thing to express. I mean, how do you even begin to try to talk about what it's like to actually have developed a relationship with a wild animal? What goes through my mind? I'm humbled. I'm grateful. I'm thankful. And that's pretty much the majority of it.